afternoon, everyone, and welcome. This is Melissa with thestockswish.com, and I'm here today to talk to you specifically about FCEL. And what I want to talk to you about this is because Igor asked me about this today. I have not looked at this chart for a while. I can't even remember the last time I looked at this chart, actually. But when he did mention it to me today, I thought to myself, the immediate thing I thought to myself is, this is I have a feeling this is a piece of crap. And I'm looking at it here, and it is a piece of crap. So there you have it. But Igor's in this long. Now, I don't know what his average cost price is, but I will tell you that what happens is most people that trade the market buy stuff and they're not specific enough with their choices. When you're risking your money in the market, you need to be very, 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 very picky about what you do, like I am, okay? And that's one of the reasons I'm successful. So it's really about looking for a specific set of criteria. When I'm taking something, I look at it, it has to meet the criteria. If it doesn't meet the criteria, then I don't want to do it. And this doesn't matter if you're going short or long. It doesn't matter if you're day trader, swing trader, core trader. I don't care what you're doing in the market. If you're taking a trade of any position, of any direction, of anything you're doing, of anything, it all has to do with the pick. And if you're in a stinky pick, then it is going to be very challenging for you to make money. Now, what do most people do when they get in something? Let's just say they take it. Let's say you have a thousand shares long of FCEL. Let's just say, let, let's just, let me just pick something just random here to just give an example. Let's say you bought a stock of five dollars, five dollars. You got a you got thousand shares of it, it's worth five dollars. Stock price goes down. Goes down, goes down to 450. You have a thousand shares, you're down five hundred dollars. Now maybe you took a poor entry in the position when you took it, or maybe it just was a crap thing that to buy and you should never have bought it. Anyways, it went down first, and you're down now in it. Now you think that it's pulling back, or you think it's still good, or you think maybe it's something you still want to get, and you think the target is 10, and I don't know the reason you bought it. Maybe you bought it because you heard something on the internet. Maybe you heard something on TV, you read it in a book, maybe the earnings were good, maybe you, you had a tip from someone, whatever, but you're down in the position, and that's a fact. And nobody can argue with that. Then you add to the position because you're saying, thinking you're going to get more of this, that you still like this, and therefore you're going to get more of this, and it's still going to go up to 10, and you're going to make even more money. And then when you take more, you're thinking, well, this is the right thing to do because I'm doubling down and I'm cost averaging my price down, which you would be because if you took another 1,000 shares at 450, your average cost price would be 475. But guess what? You'd still be down in the trade. You'd still be down two. Well, you'd be down 25 cents, or basically you'd still be down $500. So you wouldn't be any worse off as far as what you're down initially as far as the moment for the time they did the ad. But you will be worse off because now you've got a heavier into position that's actually trending in the opposite direction that you originally took it because it came down first before you made any money and it were up. And so your risk is actually more now because you doubled down. So Because you could get up tomorrow morning and it could be at 4 you know, you know what I'm saying? And all of a sudden now, now you're down two thousand dollars. When if you had the original thousand, still so you'd only be down a thousand. Now did you double down? You doubled down to lose more. That's what you did. This doubling down stuff doesn't work, and a lot of novice traders do it. But you know what's interesting? A lot of traders still that still trade today do it. The only time to do anything like that is in what I call damage control mode. You are in damage control mode, and that's the only time to do anything that's even remotely like that. I know how to do that extremely well. I haven't needed to do it in forever for years, but I do know how to do it. I absolutely do. And I teach how to do that actually in the entries class, but that is not something that anyone should do unless it is damage control mode. Like you're down, you, you're, you're hurting something and you gotta damage control yourself out of it and you're not even doing it for the purpose of making money when that time comes around. You're doing it so you can lose less when you damage control yourself. But what most people do is double down, they add more to the position, and then they do this for the purpose of trying to make more money. Or if they're down, they're trying to do it so they're not down, so they might be flat or up. But they take more in order to make that happen, a cost price average position down. But in the case of adding at 450, if you have it at 5, average cost is 475, price of the current stock is 450, you are still down in the position. Same amount as the original one before you did the ad, 500 bucks. But again, if it's not working and you're in it and it goes lower than 450 the next day or so on and so forth, you'll just lose more by adding. So it doesn't make any sense. The reality is that FCEL is not a good buy. Now, could it go back up? Yes. Do I think it's going to happen anytime soon? The answer is no. If you're in the stock long, 
you can do one of two things. If you're up, take your money and run. If you're down, you could kill it and take the loss. So that's the scoop on FCEL. This is not a quality buy. This is not a quality pick. Because this is actually, this is actually, this is nothing. What do I mean? I would not short this stock here at $1.22. And I would not buy this stock here at $1.22. Therefore, there is nothing to do with this. What is even the volume on the day of this here? It's just nothing to do with this. It's a, it barely moved today. Look, I would never trade if I had to trade something like this. It moved two cents in the day. This is pointless waste of endeavor. So getting back to what I was originally saying, you want to take the money that you have and invest it wisely. So let's just say you do have money invested in this, and you're in the position, but you're down in it, and you really think it's going to go back. And let's say your average cost price here in your NFCL, let's say your average price is 150. Like, you don't think it's a crazy dream that this would go back to 150, and you could get, actually get out of this break even. You're down in it now. Your price is 150. It's at 122 as a close of business today. But you don't think it's a dream that it will go back to 150. You're not even looking for a target now. You're just like, let me just get out of this break even. You could, lose, you could lose more, though. It may never go to 150. I'm not even saying it does go to 150. All I'm saying is, though, that in your mind, you're thinking, gosh, you know, like, could I just get this back to 150 so I could just break even on this puppy? But the reality is that, number one, it may never go back there. Number two, it's a bad trade. You were down in it in the first place. And number three, the money that you're down in this and the money that you still have invested in this, the money, because remember, you're in a trade. It's sucking up your buying power when you're in it. You're using the money that you're in it. You can't access that money or utilize that money for something else that you may want to do because this FCEL is sucking it up, okay? You could and would be better off taking a bad trade, killing the trade, taking the loss, and using that money that you have left from the trade, even with the loss, to invest in something else. You've got to think about the fact that time is money. Time is money plays a lot of factors in what the choices I make. I mean, this is obviously why... I like to day trade <laughs> because I like to make the money very quickly. I like to utilize my time extremely wisely. But I will tell you that, and this is to help everyone, okay? This is to help Igor. This is to help everyone, but Igor too. When you are in something and it's not working, if the reason that you took the trade is gone, you need to exit the trade. That's a Melissa Armo saying like I just have, period. However, on top of that, another Melissa Armo saying is that you have to be considerate of how you're investing your money in reference to the time factor because time plays a role in the market. Time is one of those things that's very unpredictable. In other words, you can say, well, this is the target, but what's the time it's going to take to get there? You could say, well, I think it's going to go back to 150 and I can get out of this break even, but the time it's going to take to get there is an unknown, as well as the fact that it's never going to get to 150 because this is a piece of crap, all right? But I'm just saying, let's say it takes you six months to get it back to break even at 150. Do you have any idea how much money you could have made in profit in good trades, quality trades, trades that you should be in that are working that you could make money in over the course of six months if you just killed this trade, took the loss, and moved on and did something else, okay? It's time is money that you have to think about it in relationship to investing or trading in the market and really, really about trading, but even investing too, because you have to think about what you're doing with your money. And even if you're in something, you're like, oh my God, I can't take the loss. I can't take the loss. I have to get out of this break even. I've got it. The money that you could spend in something that's working, you can make back in the next trade immediately or sit in this for six months or longer and, and make break even or actually never make any money at all and take a bigger loss. It, think about what I'm saying. Common sense. Common sense. So many of these things are common sense, and yet people don't use them in the market, and yet you need to because it is very important. Efficiency counts. You can take your money. You, it's everything that you have in here costs you something. When you are taking a position that's costing you money, you're using that money. That money is it has a function, and it's being used up for the trade position you're in. Even if you have to take that trade off and you're down in it, you may be better off if the position is not a good one, which this is not to be long. You take that money and then you use it for something else, and then you're letting it work for you. I mean, you're just letting your money work for you better than if you're in good trades because it'll work for you fast and if you're in good trades. If you're in bad trades, it won't work for you at all, and you're at risk of losing, and you're already down if you're in this anyways, let's just say if your cost was for the 150, and I'm just making up this number because I'm I'm saying it's not that far away from here in the sense that 
you know, you could say, well, I think it could go back there. And I'm not even saying it's going to. But I'm just saying it's the idea of utilizing your money for the correct positioning with efficiency. And that's how you have to look at it. Now, everyone takes bad trades once in a while, but you've got to learn how to take quality picks. I teach that in my Golden Gap class. And it's extremely important to learn how to trade. And think about what you're doing with your money. And even if you make a mistake and you're in something and it's not working, if you recognize that, pat yourself on the back. Forgive yourself for taking a trade based on an unknown reason that didn't make any sense. The market is not about gambling. Many people look at it that way. But just like I just said, you'd be gambling to stay in this to, if you're down in it, that it would ever go anywhere ever again that would make any sense higher. So you're gambling if you stay in it. You're not gambling if you get out of it. You're saying, I'm a responsible individual. I accept the fact that I made a mistake. I forgive myself. I'm taking the loss and I'm using my money more wisely next time. I will be more choosy about the things that I trade. And therefore, I will take Melissa's class and I will learn how to do it and find quality picks. Okay? There is a specific criteria that you need to look for in trades. The market is not gambling. However, it is set up that many people function that way in the market. That is, however, why many people do lose in the market. But for as many people as lose in the market, there are, there are people out there that are making far greater and more as far as the profits. Not number of people, but monies that are being made. And that is because people think like me, who are doing well in the market, that they have strict criteria and they don't double down. And they do things for significant purpose and they look at time wisely in reference to how they're spending their money. And things got to perform. So this is Melissa with the StockSwish.com. If you're interested in the Golden Gap class, it is May 16th and 17th is the next Golden Gap class. If you'd like more information, email me at Melissa at the StockSwish.com. Good luck, Igor, and have a great day, everyone.